Welcome back, everybody, to IGN Live at Comic-Con, brought to you by The Evil Within and Lucy. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're about to witness may just be the best damn segment of this entire show. Sin City, one of my favorite movies of all time. The sequel, Sin City, A Dame to Kill For, is in theaters next month. We are joined now by co-directors Frank Miller and Robert Rodriguez. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. No pressure, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> one of the greatest segments ever, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it, Sin City came out, it was almost 10 years ago. Yeah. I remember, uh, uh, sorry, the story I have to tell, but uh, I was in high school and I could not wait to see this movie. The trailer was, it blew me away, like the imagery and everything and the music, I, was, it was, it, I had to see it. And so I skipped school that day with some friends <laughs> to catch it. And when I saw it, it excuses, like... Excuses, excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Weiss, I didn't mean to. Uh, but no, and I saw it and it, 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 it like disgusted me, but it thrilled me and I loved it and I couldn't wait for another one. And now 10 years later, here we are, here it's we are. back. It's back, and it's back at Comic Con. That's where he launched the first one. Mm -hmm. You remember back then, people hadn't seen anything like that. We showed I, it about six months before it was released. It really launched Jessica. What we showed here, mm -hmm. it got everybody talking. It's what made it. You know, people supported it at the theater. And then uh, we we promised further disgust and further thrills. <laughs> it worked. This is the only movie I ever took a date to, and she turned to me. And she's like, Miller, I don't like this movie, and she left. <laughs> I, I did not leave. And there you go. Well, you, know, you know, she's not the one for you. Yeah, exactly. She can't handle Sin City. Yeah. Uh, why did it take almost a decade? There, there were a lot of different reasons. You know, the, the studio we're working for, they they had started a new studio. They needed to get more more money first of all. They told us to go make a couple of the projects, then come back. We're ready to do it. I think in 2007. Yeah. But. Um, Really, the timing turned out just perfect this time. I mean, we wouldn't have had this cast back then. Kind of everything kind of really fell into place. The extra yeah. stories, we had to write new stories that we were happy with because we wanted it not all to be from the books. We wanted to surprise people. So two stories from the book, two stories are new. And, and then just getting the right cast and the right combination of cast. And this time, I mean, we got it. We nailed it with these, this cast is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask, you know, what made you choose A Dame to Kill For and Another Saturday Night to be the stories to adapt for Sin City 2? Well, when I originally put together the first script to show Frank, I chose uh, the, uh, the other stories, because Dame was the longest of them. Oh. And it would have had to be truncated too much to fit into the first Sin City, even though it was yeah. the second book. Mm -hmm. So we did the Marv one for sure first. Mm -hmm. Dame, yeah. I went, oh, God, that's going to take up the whole rest of the movie. Let me skip that. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we had said from the beginning, that'll yeah. be a sequel. That would be a great yeah. sequel, because it'll and answer there questions. There were bits of it in the first one. Bits of it were in there, little pieces of it. But um, hints, you know, Clive Owen talks about having this have a new face and you don't know what he's talking about. This answers a lot of questions. Yeah. Mm. And you also had two brand new stories. So what was it like coming up with new Sin City content? Oh, it was, it was like falling off a log, really. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's a, Sin City stories occur to me pretty naturally. And, and, uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, what, a what a curse. They just flow out. And this is the thing. One time he came to Austin and said, well, let's talk about this new story. And I had my tape recorder there. Because I know it's a lot of times as a writer, you'll just start telling someone a story. And you end up filling in blanks you didn't even. And then they disappear and you forget. So I was yeah. like, I taped it. And he started telling me, well, I got this character named Johnny. And he's just got this coin. And he's going to get it all back. And I was like, keep going. <laughs> and he talked a lot of it out there and then I would play to him later and he would, he would embellish it and it was really fun getting to be in on the process of seeing him, how he creates. And then a lot of it had to draw on the set because there weren't books to go off of. Sure. So that was a thrill, asking Frank Miller for an original Frank Miller Sin City drawing on the moment, on the set, yeah. and to start sketching it out. That was like the biggest thing. So at what point did you start taking advantage of it though? <laughs> like I really can't picture this one. Do another one. Do another one. <laughs> <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, it was, it was, uh, it was quite the opposite um, be because Robert's a cartoonist himself um, and, and, and because he seems to be able to read minds. Um, I would sometimes just be a few lines into a drawing and then I'd be finishing it up, and I'd look up, and he just shot it. <laughs> <laughs> so we so, wait for the next shot. You know, it's it's it's, it's oh, uh, low angle. Guy's been hunched over. Okay. <laughs> While he's drawing it, I'd be over there lining up the camera. So returning to Sin City after so many years and movies in between, were there new challenges that you encountered, or was it was it easier to make than the first movie? Well, we we shot this one in 3D. Some things were easier. I mean, I had shot the first digital 3D movie just before I did Sin City. It was called Spy Kids 3D. That's really what started 3D digital and the and the technology. There was like there were like these big buckets, you know, of cameras that you move around. This time we had the very latest Jim Cameron, Jim, uh, you know, Vince Pace cameras. They look like Ferraris. They didn't, we could shoot several cameras at once. They didn't get yeah. in the way. So some things the technology made things easier, but the technology was really more advanced. And um, 
and every, all the actors just kind of knew what they were doing. The first time, nobody had done green screen movie like that yeah. before. Yeah, I remember this is only 10 years ago, but it was like, people are like, what are we doing? Where are the also, props? Also the, now the, they understood. The, the, the first one established a tone and, sure. and the world that, that the um, actors were at first unfamiliar with. And you know, now Mickey Rourke shows up and he's Mark. Imagine, he's even better than the first you know, one. And, Jessica and, is even better than the first one. Je like, Jessica, Jessica is, 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 is you know, a dozen times better in, 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 because she's got a much more dramatic role and she's much less a piece of eye candy than she is a fully fledged character. But also they understood the process and came in yeah. knowing, okay, we're in this sea of green, but we know what this is gonna be like later. Yeah. And they really delivered more. That really surprised me the most is how much they had learned in that 10, 10 years. Yeah, Jessica especially, we see her, she starts almost starts to look a little bit like Marv before the end of it, <laughs> what we see from the trailer with the cuts on her face. Uh, yeah. So she, she looks like she's, and it's, it's all her story, right, of getting, uh, I don't want to like spoil or anything, before what we see from the trailer, she's like getting vengeance, right, for yeah. what happened in the first movie? She's seeking it, yes. The, uh, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not tell anything about my story. But <laughs> no, no, <laughs> please, yeah, I like, oh, my, my presence on Christmas, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, um, but the, the, uh, um, it really was, it really was across the board, um, um, uh, a thrill to work as a talent. I mean, I, there, there was one point where I had written um, a line for Rosario Dawson, which was uh, unexpectedly soft for her. Um, you know, her speaking of her, 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 her love of flight, <laughs> and uh, what Rosario did was, was um, soften her voice just to the right degree and then bring it right back to the <laughs> hard-edged character that we're used to. So it's, it's the, the, the characters gain dimension. Yeah, nice. a lot by the, by the actors. All right, we have a question from Facebook. Remember, everybody, go like our page, submit your questions with the hashtag IGN Live. Mitch says, the visuals of Sin City is almost a character in itself. Do you enjoy trying to figure out what should be in color and what should be in black and white? Yeah, I mean, that started in the, in the first film. I remember um, we had a guide from Frank's books of what should be in color, but then as I was editing, I'd be there spot coloring some other pieces, and I would send it to Frank to make sure he thought that was yeah. cool, because I was starting to take you know some liberty. And, yeah. Yeah. and he went, oh, you're using color as a weapon. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so we kind of figured, mapped out where would it be, and you know, I'd show him some ideas, and he would say, oh, there, no, but that one's good. You know, yeah. let's, let's make Goldie actually have color. Yeah. Well, that, that was one of the most wonderful touches he did was that, was that um, it's, it's almost unnoticeable, but, but when um, Wendy steps into the light, it's the climax of, of, um, of the Marv story, she, she enters with, with, with the, the white hair she had in, in the, um, you know, throughout the story, and she emerges from, from, from the light with gold hair. So that he knows who it is. He thinks it's somebody else, and then he, when he comes forward, the color helps him realize, oh, okay, yeah. it's that person. So things like that that you could play with later and go. Yeah. Incredible. It's and, you know, that yeah, was a huge like, thing, the, the colors of, like, what's it going to be? And it was added, like, an extra layer. It wasn't in the comic book, but it helped right. make it more cinematic. So it was super great. <coughs> you know, while we have you here, you hear, Frank, you know, it's Batman's 75th anniversary. I hope you don't mind if we... If we ask you, you know, about about Batman, of, of you know, when so many people at the Batman seventy five, <laughs> so many people at the Batman seventy five panel uh, cited your work as as what got them into comics, like, yeah. you know, like Jim Lee and and, totally. and um, so. How do you feel about like getting that kind of praise of, of just all these like, great creators? And they said it all started with you. What you did with the Dark Knight Returns. Well, it was wonderful to hear, um, but but working on Batman is is is, is contributing to a collective work that take, takes place over generations. And that's why we're so happy to be sitting next to Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill, because without their work, I don't know if I could have done Dark Knight. That, that, that they, they um, uh, you know, Neil in particular, so, real, so um, you know, recreated the character that, that I mean, he, he, took, he took scripts that were written in the old days um, before he worked with Denny. And, and they were all set during daytime, and he just ignored that and set them at night. <laughs> and, 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 and made Batman into the scary character that he did. Now, Robert, you directed two Sin City movies. Would you ever consider directing the Sim City movie? 
The Sin City movie yeah. was the one that I originally wanted to do. That was and the then one. I settled for Sin City. Yeah. Hey, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do want to ask, uh, I was pleasantly surprised to get a sequel to Machete. Uh, I, I liked the first movie a lot. I ne wasn't necessarily expecting a sequel, though. Does that mean there's any possibility we could get a sequel to Planet Terror? I, I, had a, I thought at least I would do a trailer for it. Yeah. I thought it was going to be called Cherry Darling. <laughs> but we never got a chance to do it. But maybe someday. I mean, it's a great character. So I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. People, you know, I really find out the Comic Con, what people like the most when I come to these and do signings, yeah. people bring a lot of planetary posters. A lot of Sin City, but for my own stuff, they bring a lot of planetary. Yeah. Cool. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming by. Sure. The show. Thank you. Super excited for Sin City. Dame to kill for it. Oh, you're going to love it. You're, not, you're going to be freaking good. <laughs> we're really, we're really proud of it. I know. I know. Really <laughs> uh, August 22nd. I'll testify. <laughs> uh, thanks again. Stay tuned for much, much more to come here from IGN Live at San Diego Comic Con right after these messages.